The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. You belong on the water. Adventure begins at the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the Shoretown Ballpark in Lakewood, home of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. For tickets and more, visit JerseyBoatExpo.com. Captain Nathan Bernhard shared this amazing whale video that he captured on cell phone just three miles off Cape Cod this week. And what you're seeing, the wonder of nature, is referred to as bubble feeding behavior by these humpbacks. Now, Captain Bernhard says that they see whales on the tuna grounds on a regular basis, of course, but this is the best he's encounter the he's ever had. Look, he's Amazing. The by the way, he says he and his crew are developing a new show to launch in October called Deep Water Legends. We'll have to keep an eye out for it. But I'll tell you what, this video of these humpbacks, this pod of whales feeding bubble behavior, is legendary all on its own. It's August 17th, 2023, my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, Michelle. Not that she's watching, of course, she never does. I'm Jim Hutchinson, and this is your weekly video fishing forecast for the week for the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region of the Fisherman Magazine. Now, humpbacks are in the news again this week with that video, but it's not all beautiful, bright and cheery news either. More on that later in this week's program. But that opening segment makes me think of an article that ran in the July edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It was called Old School Offshore, Interpreting Whale Behavior. It was written by Alex Friedman. Now, Alex describes that bubble net feeding behavior that you just saw, whereby a pod of whales will actually blow air and use bubbles to, um, to, to kind of get those bait to be corralled and then it's just one big simple gulp and everything's good. Tuna below, quite possibly, even probably. And according to Friedman in that article, after the bubble feeding, uh, when you see those humpbacks on top deliberately slapping their tails, that's called lobtailing. And that behavior, that social behavior, typically means that the feed is done and it's time for you to find a new offshore stop sign for your fishing. But that is just amazing. It's amazing video. I got to thank Captain Nathan for sharing that. And of course, when you're heading offshore, you're looking for the whales because so many times that's where you're going to find so much bait. Speaking, of course, is the run of squid from the seaside lump to the Humpty Dumpty in the northern half of the Garden State and all areas in between has been nothing short of extraordinary. Now, head boats heading out of Manasquan and Shark River in particular have put passengers on the calamari. Squid jigs flying off the shelves. And yes, tuna have been popping up and gulping down the occasional live line squid. Century's Rob Crosley said he hit the seaside lumps uh, the other day at sundown, flatlined a squid just as a wolf pack of hungry tuna was coming through. Brought this 62-incher home for the grill or the sushi table, if so be it. Um, again, when you're finding all these squid on the fish finder, it's not like there's so much uh, tuna action out there that you're just going to immediately score. You do still have to find those fish, and occasionally that becomes a little bit frustrating. But the one thing that I'm wondering, too, is with all that squid just offshore, and that's what, 12, 15 miles out, seaside lump, you might want to think about your doormat hunts out there, because if that squid is, is out there in big numbers, I'm sure those doormat fluke are there as well. But back to the tuna, noted TV actor James Pickens, Grey's Anatomy, which my wife watches all the time, even if she doesn't watch my video, He's also on the Connors. Well, he joined Captain Justin aboard Justin Time Sport Fishing earlier this week, flat calm seas and yellowfin on the jig. Squid jigs, live line gear, sterling wide trackers if you need to cover some ground to find those fish, for those fish. jigs when you have the marks, and poppers, of course, Chug, Chug Norris uh, or the man, Mad Mantis. Oh, the alliteration kills me. But here's a first for me anyway. I spoke to Captain Nick DeGenero uh, of the IGFA. He's in town this week for a kids event we both did on Tuesday. He shared this video with me, fished with George Sear on his boat, Real Keeper, when Colby Capri had his RWA popper engulfed, not by a tuna, but by a 150 pound blue marlin, all caught on Nick's camera phone. Unbelievable. But wait, there's more. 
Gregory, Gregory Bigiani, uh, Bigiani, he e emailed me this week after fishing the elephant trunk off Cape May this past weekend, trolling a ballyhoo on a Joe Shoots rig. That there, my friends, is a barracuda, a 42-incher off the Jersey coast. That's the best thing about fishing in salt water. You don't know what you're going to find until you put a hook in the water. Or as Tom Waits said, fishing for a good time starts with throwing in your line. Now, in this week's digital edition of The Fisherman Magazine, available to our subscribers at thefisherman.com, the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition, you'll see one of those exotics that we covered a couple of weeks ago in this video fishing forecast. Dominic Vercella's 67. 0.45 pound uh, king mackerel out of Manasquan, a pending New Jersey state record. As soon as that gets processed by the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife and its DEP, we'll know more. But that should come through as a state record in no time. But also note on the cover there this week, uh, we're getting plenty of reports of grunt coming through the door of late. Pete Evangelist, he posted this image to the Betty and Nick's Tackle Shop page a few weeks back, but we had more reports of this South Atlantic species in our weekly reports at thefisherman.com posted this past Monday. Go check it out. Make sure you check out the reports. They're available every Monday afternoon at thefisherman.com. North, Central, and South Jersey, all the freshwater, beach report, Delaware coast, um, and of course, uh, Tom P's uh, uh, offshore report in freshwater. Did I mention freshwater? That's there every single week throughout the year. Other visitors in this second half of summer, false albacore. Now these speedsters won't really hit the surf line until perhaps later on this month into September and October. But the Huber boys found about an acre of the little tunny near Ollie's Lump the other day. Dennis said he and Tommy had a blast on light tackle. Now mid-range or offshore, if you're heading out past the horizon, past your cell phone signal, here's a tip from the Fisherman Magazine's Tim Smith on keeping in touch wherever you go, independent of your VHF radio. This is a non-biased review of the Garmin InReach. I bought this little unit last year, so it's not sponsored by anybody. This is the time of year when you're offshore chasing tuna and other pelagic species. Safety is no accident, so having a satellite communicator like this will give you peace of mind. When things go wrong, it happens quickly, and you can't always rely on your VHF to get the distress signal out. The Garmin InReach has an SOS button so that you can be rescued no matter where you are in the world. Of course, this comes with a price. There's a monthly fee from $15 a month to $65 a month, depending on your needs. The Garmin InReach will connect through your Bluetooth to your phone so you can send out a text message to anybody without having cell phone service. Another benefit is this unit will track your location every 10 minutes and post that position on a private website that you can share with anyone. The unit is not cheap at $400, but that's a small price to pay for your safety. Whenever I travel, the unit comes with me hiking, fishing, off-roading. The Garmin InReach has many other features. I just touched on some of them. On the negative side, I wish I could send photos through the satellite communicator. Who knows, maybe that's a feature for the future. The bottom line is, I would recommend this Garmin InReach. This is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com. Of course, we are officially in the second half of the summer season. Uh, after August 7th, that's the second half of the summer solstice. And most of the better fluke action at this point, of course, is outside on the wrecks, the reefs, along those deeper sloughs, the edges of the deeper channels. But there are a lot of small fluke in the back bays at this point. In fact, the ones that I've been catching in Bayhead, people are laughing at me, but they're like palm sized. It's almost like a nursery area back there. We are still getting reports though, as evidenced in South Jersey's report by Anthony Califano this week, there are some keepers to be had in the back, especially the farther south in New Jersey you go. Um, as that bait, it starts to rush out of the creeks, you got the peanut bunker, you got the finger mullet, there's a lot of bait in the back. So naturally you're gonna still find some fish in the back and as soon as those water temperatures start to decrease, I can't wait to head back there looking along the sod banks. But the fluke are there as well. Chuck Quayle, he emailed on August 15th to say he and his son fished Turtle Creek, seven feet of water, caught this 23 incher on a squid style bucktail. Chuck said, quote, still some nice fish in the back bays. We weeded through a few to get a keeper. A few sometimes means 20 or more. 
uh, if you're still fishing in those back bays. And again, peanut bunker is definitely a killer bait at this time. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if you're gonna catch other things right outside of those creek mouths. High tide, especially early morning, just as the tide turns, it starts coming out of those creek mounts. If you've got a Minn Kota trolling motor, you know, anchor, spot lock yourself outside of those creek mounts. A little jig head and a peanut bunker on the end. Go into that creek just enough so that peanut bunker kind of wobbles on the way out. You might catch weak fish and who knows what other species are back there. But certainly fluke are going to be feeding on, on those feeder creeks as well. Farther to the south, Philly's Chris Eastburn headed to Lewis, Delaware last week with buddy Jack McLaughlin. They loaded up on the flounder, seven and a half pounds aboard the Grizzly. So it's good to see some sizable fish and good numbers of fish too offshore of Delaware, uh, probably around some of those reef sites. The head boats, of course, getting it done right now north and south as those qualified captains and crews can help you get through the sticky stuff. Alex from the Happy Hour Bar in Levittown, PA, fished the Skylarker this week, nabbed this four pound fluke, and right next door at the Port of Belmar, Vernon's Mark DiPrizio. He had this pool winning fluke on the big mohawk over the weekend, a five pounder caught on a two ounce bucktail tipped with salmon colored gulp grub, six inches, on a Jigging World Onyx and Daiwa BG3500. If you read my article in the August edition of the Fisherman Magazine, if you're on some of those uh, head boats, especially the big Mohawk, which is getting out and really focusing on the doormat fluke, make sure you bring your high quality uh, spinning outfit, your spinning rod and reel, and certainly a, a whole bunch of gulp. I'll take the old pretzel containers. I'll get those big uh, uh, peanut butter filled pretzels. And once I'm done with one of those things, and I can only eat a few, few of those during the year, but I'll load all my gulp, the six inch grubs in there. The pinks, the pink shines, the whites, and yes, indeed, the salmon color. Um, the last week, I shared with you a photo of our weekly cover shot uh, from mom Sherry Buda Noreen and daughter Maya on the cover with some fluke on Staten Island. I would tell you that some of the very best fluke action right now besides that deep water is out along our local beaches. As that bait starts getting bigger, uh, starts prepping for the fall migration, you go towards the inlets where you'll find more bait and of course, uh, bait, and of course down the beaches in the sloughs and troughs along the beach. But the ladies, uh, Sherry and Maya, and even daughter, young Ava, still getting it done with young Ava now in the mix as well, cranking down on a few shorebound keepers. Uh, there in Staten Island. Good job, ladies. Somebody What's asked where. Get yourself uh, Google Earth real, 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 and take a look and find where you can find a state park. Might be state, might be city, might be federal in Staten Island. Give you good access to some really quality waters up there along the Raritan Bay Shore on the Staten Island side where you can catch some good fluke, especially where a harbor on the outgoing tide is dumping out some of that bait. Speaking of the surf and fluke, I haven't seen a photo, but our, in our weekly reports at thefisherman.com this week, the crew at Fanatics and Ocean City reported on a nine pound fluke from shore. That was in Nick Honachewski's Beach Talk report, his uh, surf column. 27 inches from the north end of town by seven year old Seamus McDonald. Have not seen the photo, like I said, but if you know young Seamus, send me that photo. Send it over to Jay Hutchinson at thefisherman.com, I would love to share that immense surf caught fluke. By beach or by boat, you can score this season in the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat uh, Fishing Challenge. It's subscribers only. You gotta pay the $29.95 for the subscription, but then you're automatically entered. It's only a matter of catching some big fish at that point. Fluke, number one species that folks target in our region always on the leaderboard with some, with some impressive catches. For a look at where we are with the latest leaderboard, let's go back to the production room and check in with my buddy, Tim Smith. We had two fish hit the board this week in the Dream Boat Challenge. The first was a 2.75 pound sea robin entered by Tri Koo, landing him in seventh place for the category. Then we had a 10.95 pound fluke entered by Kyle Kraus, landing him in seventh place for the flatfish category. The top three somehow avoided change this week. We have Luke Citrarelli sitting in third place with 13 points, Eddie Terrabiel holding in second place with 18 points, and Bobby Cifarelli still leading the event with 25 total points. Keep an eye on Kyle Krause though, he's waiting just off the podium with 12 total points. 
The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. So yeah, good fluke in the surf, but also don't forget about those speedsters, the Bonito and the Spanish mackerel. Some uh, kingfish and croakers in South Jersey, starting around Brigantine and Atlantic City and moving down into Cape May. Worms or clams on a high-low rig, of course, fish, ba uh, fish bites bag of worms uh, will do the trick bait-wise. You'll find those kings north as well from Beach Haven all the way up to Sandy Hook in the wash. Good summer of sheep's head so far at the Jersey Shore. In the back, Chris Hillock said he and the boys had a great day of sheep's head fishing in South Jersey last week, nabbed this fantastic photo uh, of 12-year-old son releasing a good-sized convict fish. Well done, fellas. My man Tom P. from Rack and Fin Radio, Saturday mornings on ESPN Radio out of Atlantic City, covers hunting and fishing on 97.3 FM, Atlantic County. You'll see his regular offshore report in the Fisherman Magazine, both in the print and on the dot com, the fisherman dot com. And his regular columns appear throughout the year. Um, lo and behold, you'll also find this madman shackled behind the counter at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown. Well, this week, the fisherman's Jenny Ackerman let him out of his cage, wound him up, let him go. Let's check in with Jenny and Tom P. at Creekside for some sweet water options from the Pine Barrens of the Jersey Coast. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today we're at Creekside Outfitters and Tom here is going to give us the rundown on freshwater fishing. I need his words of wisdom because the only freshwater fishing I do is ice fishing. So Right now the hottest thing is frog fishing. Frogs on top. Spro frog right here, it's weedless. You tie your braid directly. You want to use braid, you don't want to use mono. Braid will cut through that vegetation. The bass are going to come up and run it and just suck it down. Give it a two count and then just cross his eyes. These also appeal to pickle. Okay. Pickle are another great summertime fish. On top, towards evening, the Arbogast Jitterbug. <laughs> Across the top, probably the most favorite summertime lure ever, ever invented. And one of my models, you bring it to terms when you're using the worms. <coughs> The Yamamoto, the Sankos, the Yam Sanko, you can, it's, it's infused so heavily with salt, you, if you want to fish it on a Texas rig, you don't need a bullet weight. Put the hook right through, hook right through the nose, and let it drop, and it will just knock the snot out of them as well. Or you can wacky rig it. Hook it right through the platellum area there, and what you do is you let it sink, and then you snap it like that, and it goes boom, boom, boom and then it goes down, and the bass cannot stand it, people. They go crazy. My real deal, live bait. Look at that bad boy. Fish that under a float. Bass love worms. Catfish love worms. Big bluegills and crappies love worms. And last but not least, hey, hey, a live killie. These things are absolutely devastating. Oh! <laughs> but fused with Tom P. Energy. Look at that. Look at that little bad boy. Hook him through the lips. Just let him go. Use people, by all means, use an inline circle hook. That'll cut down the chances of the bass swallowing it or the pickerel swallowing it pronto. Well, thank you, Tom, and everyone at Creekside Outfitters. Now, Creekside caters to both freshwater and saltwater anglers. So if you're heading down towards Waretown, stop in at both of their locations. Signing off. Notice the Fisherman Magazine. <laughs> we are there. Thank you, Johnny DeBona, for this. <laughs> Isn't she great? Isn't she great? More dead whales washing up along our beaches and a 30 minute documentary literally sounds the alarm on industrial offshore wind surveys. But first, let's use some of those tactics we learned from Jenny and Tom P and head west. Check in with my buddy, George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy. 
Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, hopefully we'll get a full weekend without rain this coming weekend. It'd certainly be nice to see. Let us get out and enjoy some of that water. So we'll see what happens. But you know, guys out in the Delaware River, they're still catching fish and lots of good fishing to be had. Tim Keebler checked in. He's still getting clients out on some great smallmouth fishing. So don't discount this weather as the fishing is not going to be good. There's lots of fish to be had. Even in the upper Delaware, Rich Bates checked in. Well, he's still getting plenty of bass as well. So check out the river if you want to get into some good fishing possibly this weekend. Now the lakes are producing as well. We had a young Isabella out, Isabella Grouper out with her pop Will, and she usually catches a bunch of uh, stripers. She's always getting into those, uh, those purebreds and those hybrids. Well, she managed to get into a beautiful little catfish this last weekend, and I'll tell you what, I'm jealous of that one because that's a really nice, nice catfish. Way to go, Isabella. Now also, um, Chuck Raphael checked in uh, with the young Ryland. Now Ryland's out in Sussex, New Jersey, jigging up some of those crappies and using those Kitex. Uh, that's probably one of the best lures I know if you want to jig up some crappie, a Kitex on a jig head, and it's almost guaranteed to get you in some of those great fish. So way to go there, Ryland. Now we talked a little bit about trout last, last week, and my good friend Eric Goodstall, our trout guru, well, he's leaving those trout alone. He's out there on light tackle getting into some of these sunfish and other fish in the stream so there's plenty of fish to, to keep you busy even if you can't get over onto those trout so lots of good fishing guys i hope you're getting out this weekend and don't forget to send us those photos of your new pbs guys get out and get on them but from pennsylvania i'm george your pokemon outdoors guy now last friday a 30-foot humpback whale was found dead on the beach at fire island on Long Island, at least the 18th doomed whale to wash up along our New Jersey, New York beaches since the beginning of this year. Now, this majestic creature was found belly up at Smith County Park on Long Island, which happens to be a fantastic stretch for striper fishing in the fall. But according to NOAA Fisheries, the cause of death is unknown. Then the next day, Saturday, another dead humpback washed ashore, this time on the beaches of Long Branch, New Jersey. That's home to U.S. Congressman Frank Pallone and his brother, Long Branch Mayor John Pallone. I bring that up because Mr. Pallone has long been a champion of, our, uh, of clean oceans, of our estuaries, of our clean environment, of course, uh, for uh, sensible fisheries conservation as well. Yet... We're still not getting answers from the federal government as to why these whales have been washing up dead over the past eight years. Now, this young humpback in Long Branch was nicknamed Saint by whale watchers who have been tracking this beautiful mammal for some time. Noah and our governor said there's no evidence that high-powered testing off our shores is causing this unusual spate of mortalities. But I found this to be very interesting. Screen grabs using Navionics and the AIS tracking system. My buddy sent this over. I'm not saying that it's a smoking gun, but it's highly coincidental. One of those industrial wind survey ships was tracking a lot of ground off Seagirt in the days immediately prior to the whale deaths. A prevailing southeast wind put Saint on a pretty dead on northwesterly track from Seagirt to Long Branch in those couple of days right after the surveys. Now, I know our federal government says there's no evidence that says industrial offshore wind survey, surveys are causing the ship strikes that are killing these whales. But you hear that sound? I mean, if this sound was echoing through your house for five or six, eight hours at a clip, and you bolted out the front door and ran right into the street, and were crushed by an 18-wheeler driving down the road, what caused your death? There's a new documentary that was just released by executive producer Leighton Woodhouse and Michael Schellenberger. It's called Thrown to the Wind by director-producer Jonah Markowitz. I've seen the tease video, which I've included in the link in the YouTube description. It's right at the bottom here. I highly recommend checking it out. It captures these high decibel sounds that you just heard from, from about a half a mile away from a wind survey vessel off the Jersey coast earlier this year. Right now, the full documentary, it's about 30 minutes. It costs money to view. I haven't seen it in full yet. I'm, I'm not sure uh, what's in the entire production yet, but I'm hoping it becomes more readily available to the public at some point very soon. 
the tease itself is definitely worth checking out. I mean, think about this. You heard that sound. Maddening. Echoing madness. At a time when the federal government is actively trying to hammer the recreational fishing community with onerous speed restrictions on larger center consoles and sport fishers, uh, sport fishermen, express models, all in the effort to save the whales, while potentially ignoring any possible sonar interference to marine mammals and their method of communication while proposing to lay out 10,000 miles of undersea high-powered cables coming from 3,400 wind turbines and millions of square acres of federal lands leased by foreign companies to develop industrial offshore wind, paying the federal government money, and you don't want to look at any of this stuff? I don't know, man. Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Still waiting on another documentary to drop from rabble rouser Jim Brewer, where we sat down together last month to talk about industrial offshore wind and the science that indicates how dangerous this could be on our marine fisheries. I also believe there's a, uh, a, a national news piece in the wings. It's all about how the fishing industry is expressing concerns about industrial offshore wind. We're waiting for that piece to drop sometime later this month into the beginning of September. As soon as that's out, I will share it. Now. To learn more about my findings on, uh, on, on um, uh, industrial offshore wind and the potential impacts on our fisheries, go to thefisherman.com. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. It's called Myth or Matter, Is Offshore Wind Blowing In Too Fast? Just look for it by typing that word, that phrase, Myth or Matter, into the search bar. I posted cited scientific journals and research papers, which I reviewed, so you know that this isn't made up data. It's existing scientific research. I don't have a tinfoil cap anywhere. I could make one, I don't have one. Next week, the Facebook group Save LBI will host two presentations of promises and realities, wind turbine projects off LBI shores. The first is Wednesday, August 23rd, 6.30 p.m. That's at the Queen City Marina in Beach Haven. The second, Sunday, August 27th, 5 p.m. at Bay Breeze Park Pavilion in Barnegat Light. Get details by going over to savelbi.org. This Saturday, August 19th, you've got the Ozarks 24th Annual Fluke Tournament and Greater Saltwater Open. Entry at the captain's meeting on Thursday, two different locations, $200. For details, call Rob. 609-514-4096 or go to ozarkgso.com. Again, you'll find a complete listing of all the events in the New Jersey, Delaware region for fishermen. It's in the Fisherman Magazine, the August edition. It's still on newsstands right now, though we are just one week out from the printing of our September edition of The Fisherman. My, how time flies. You've got the classic offshore event in the region next week, the annual Mid-Atlantic Tournament out of South Jersey Marina and South Jersey Tournaments. That's August 20th through the 25th. And looking ahead to the weekend offshore conditions, according to NOAA Weather, the transition into next week, I dare say things look pretty good. This weekend, look for mahi on those inshore and mid-range high flyers, the pots and flyers, the weed lines, any floating debris. As shared at the beginning of this week's video fishing forecast, things are really lined up now with the amount of bait and all that offshore mid-range life. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe this is the weekend where you can head to the mid-range grounds just offshore, some of the reef sites, Cape May Reef or perhaps Axel Carlson, and add a little color to the fish box this week. Catch him up. I'll see you again next week. Happy birthday, darling. And I'll see you again here at thefisherman.com.